Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mystics of Texas. If you're a regular follower, you know from last Sunday, I said we're gonna do a presentation on the history of religions and their positive and negative impacts on the human spirit. We are not doing that today, I apologize. We're gonna do that next week. We've had some uh, fun, challenging things uh, happening in and around uh, a bunch of us lately. And I just wanted to touch on some of those things and I thought they would be very valuable for you at home and for you know everybody here and I wanted y'all to be a little closer to me because I love all of y'all so thanks for staying close to me I know we're a little bit more spread out in the big uh, barn sanctuary over there but I think and what I can feel from everybody that I know is that the the world seems to be strange <laughs> You know, there's a um, there's a lot of good and bad. Like there's some really good places where you can find community like that, like this, in various churches, synagogues, big different groups, temples, mosques, uh, universal spiritual places like this. You know, where we just welcome everybody, and everybody helps enhance our spiritual nature and communicate better, and learn and grow and meditate. Um, so I'm thankful that there are some positive forces in the world, but the world has a lot of darkness. There are a lot of dark people. And at the same time, it's almost like the yin and yang. You know, you got this big dark force and you got this light force. And sometimes it just feels like that light gets dim. You know, at least that has happened to me over the past several weeks. And I think if we really pay attention like me and Chuck were talking about this a minute ago. You know, last week's presentation was how to be, uh, to recognize if you're proactive or reactive. So if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend it. I thought it was pretty good. So, um, if we don't take a pause back when we feel like we're so dark, we allow the, the floodgates of that darkness to fall upon us. At least that's the way it works for me sometimes. I gotta take a step back and go, Okay, all right, I need to gather my, my thoughts. I need to gather myself so I can be a better person to me and the people that I care about and the people in my circle and to ultimately communicate and meditate to the infinite the best way I know how. And it seems like that the world is crashing. You know, prices for everything are too high. There's war everywhere. We're having the fun wars that we don't even believe in. The educational system has run amok. Everything seems to be falling apart and there's a lot of helplessness and loneliness. And even in this place where people are everywhere, big cities, even in rural, I mean, we're all gathered here in the middle of the woods. And a lot of us still feel lonely. We feel alone. And I think it's unnecessary. Like it doesn't have to be that way. Like I believe it's a conscious choice that we can decide that we're gonna participate in, whether it's like coming out here or being involved in any group or, or whatever it is. And I think we can beat darkness, but it is not an overnight process. You know, like when I find myself on the verge of getting depressed or many years ago in the depths of my depression, I found it increasingly hard for a long time to overcome my anxiety, to overcome my fear, to overcome me not trusting anybody. And I think everybody here can probably relate to that. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure you can, Angel. And so it really requires us to take a, a proactive step and who, who am I gonna be around? Who am I gonna choose to spend my time with? And we've touched it on this many times here and we're gonna touch on it countless times more because we are our friends. If we choose to be around crappy people, we are really likely to be a crappy person. And, but that's not to say good people don't make mistakes and good people do bad things. And from my experience here, I have had the really good fortune to help people and a lot of people. And a lot of people that aren't here today that come out here all the time. But I've had some of them really do negative things. And it has affected quite a few of us that are here today. And I just want to briefly touch on it, just so some of y'all who don't know, like 
I gave somebody some money and they took it and they felt uh, bad, so they needed to leave. Um, I guess they felt bad. Maybe they didn't feel bad. I, I don't know. Uh, I had somebody that said they were going to do something. They didn't do it and they broke the word. Cost thousands of dollars. They felt bad. They need to leave. I've helped so many people. And I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back. I'm saying it because it's a universal experience. There was a guy that Andrew, my buddy sitting out here today, said, hey, we're going to go help this guy. And I know him. He comes here regularly. I was like, yeah, let's go help him. So me and Chuck, we go help this guy. We bring him back out here. He doesn't have a place to stay. So we put him up in one of the places here. And he was an addict. He was a recovering addict. And what I've known about him, he had been sober for a while. And I applauded that and I encouraged that. And, but he brought his addiction here. And do I think he's a good guy? Probably in his core, he's a pretty fantastic guy. But did he do something really bad? Yeah, he brought his addiction and some really bad people out here. And we got to, to me, that is something that is unacceptable. Like, we have to have boundaries in our life. And that's not to say we don't help people. We help as many people as we possibly can because that helps us. It produces good karma. And I don't think we should go into helping people going, oh, look at me, I'm such a great person. Or I'm going to get something out of it if, if I help you. That, that's the wrong way to think, in my opinion. Because I would not be in the positions that I am to even help anybody if I wouldn't have got tremendous amount of help from really badass people. I mean, like, badass people men. I didn't really have any women help me. Uh, just a couple. Not for any particular reason. I'm just how my life unfolded. I had some great guys that really been over backwards to improve my life. And when you look at the broad spectrum of things, you know, you help 10 people. Yeah, maybe it helps half of them. Maybe. Maybe 80% of them don't care. They take advantage of you. But in order for us, I think, to be successful at helping others and make this world better one person at a time is to not think about whether or not it's problematic for you. Except you can only help somebody if it does not harm you. You can't just give everybody all your money. Oh, this guy's broke. Go over here. Take my life savings. You know, that, that's stupid. It's stupid to say, well, I have a date with my wife. It's very important. It's our, you know, something really special, but this guy needs a ride somewhere. You know, and they're beg you know, pestering you. Sorry, dude, I can't help you. I have a date with my wife. I'm not, that's a boundary. I'm not going to break that. So we have to use our common sense when helping people because, you know, helping this guy the other day, it didn't do any, there was no negative consequence on me other than I worked really hard to maintain a really positive reputation here like really hard. My reputation is extraordinarily valuable to me. And that's not to say I care about what other people think, but at the same time, I do care what they think. Because if enough people are talking crap about you, yeah, there's probably a bunch of some truth to that. You know, if a couple of people, you know, who cares? There's always haters and, you know, whatever. So we just need to be cautious. And me and Randall have been talking, and I think this plays right into that, about why there is so much like dark forces just like squashing us down. Like you see it everywhere. Most people just don't have a purpose. They have, most of them have a job they hate. Most of them are in relationships that they don't like. And they can't figure out their passion. Like, what am I passionate about? What do I enjoy doing? You know, if you don't like your job, you can take baby steps to go do something you want to do if you can find out what it is. If you're broke, you can take baby steps to figure out how to make money. You can be around people that know how to make money and do make money. You can, if you need a spiritual elevation, well, you, you come to groups like this. You elevate your soul by who you hang around. So whenever you are having those dark days, you're like, hey, I got a friend because I've gotten close to most of y'all here. 
pretty close to this group who's here today on Sunday. And my life has been infinitely improved just by having y'all in my life. And would that mean I would say, no, nobody else can come here. You know, well, you know, we've been burned by helping people. That would be stupid. That would just be really dumb. And I encourage all of us to continue to help people because that's what we have to do. And I think we need to find relationships that strengthen us in every way. And it's really difficult to do that in this world. There's negativity, people want to use us, people want to take advantage of us. Uh, I mean, how many countless times have people come out here and their only reason that they're coming is because they think, oh, well, Kevin will just make up a job for me to do out here so I can just do shit for him and, and then they'll pay me. And then they do a crappy job or don't show up or make me plan my day around. Like, it's just, it's outrageous. But am I going to stop doing that? No, because sometimes we genuinely need to help out here and there's genuine people that come out and help. Chase is a great example of that. So is Aaron. And you. So is that going to stop? No. I just think we all need a bunch of hugs. I think we need love. And if you're really interested on the history of religion and how it's affected uh, our broader understanding of the world, I think you'll enjoy next Sunday's presentation. And I love y'all. Thanks for coming. And I appreciate it. It's a pretty short presentation or talk today. That's all I got. I love y'all. Peace out.